What's going on everybody, this is Toy Addict 26 here and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Play Arts Guy Arkham City Series 2 Robin action figure by Square Enix. This new Robin action figure is based on his look in the very popular Arkham City video game. And just like the previous assortments, the package can be opened up like a book to reveal the figure inside which is visible behind a clear plastic window alongside a dynamic image of the figure and character bio. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the figure out of the package. All right, here we have the Robin figure. And uh, of course, this Robin figure is inspired by his look in the Arkham City video game. So it's it's not supposed to be like the comic book look or anything like that. He has a very cool um, design overall. He's got this armored kind of shirt with the Robin emblem. And uh, he has these gauntlets in uh, silver and he has the the actual arm bracers here they're in multicolor there's an olive green and then there's a lighter green so that makes a nice contrast the paint application overall is kinda simple on the entire body except for here in the um, pretty much in the abdominal area and the armor there's a little bit of airbrushing there it brings out a lot of the details in the um, armor of the shirt and the abdominals. There's a little bit of airbrushing here at the top of the biceps there where the where the actual shirt ends and the most detail is featured on the cape itself. The cape is painted in a black and then it has dry brushing effects of a um, almost like a dark navy blue and that really brings out a lot of details it makes it makes the sculpt pop um, so that's a really nice added touch I love when the Square Enix folks do the dry brushing because I think that really brings out the um, sculpted details on the pieces so the cape here as we can see it's it's composed of three separate pieces the upper part splits in two and then you have the main component cape which is short it doesn't reach its knees and it kind of has a curve here at the bottom. The inside of the cape liner is in a bright yellow and the cool thing about the cape being separated into three pieces is that these shoulder pieces are very uh, malleable, they're very flexible so they allow for a wider range of movement on the arms. You can want to put Robin's arm way up here. You can do it However, the cape will look a little awkward because that looks kind of weird right there. I think probably the highest you can do, you, you could bring up the arm, is about here. And you have the cape laying over the bicep and it looks pretty natural. And that's pretty pretty good uh, height for the pose that you might want to put him in, like holding his staff over his head or whatnot. The articulation is just like any other Play Arts Kai figures. Um, you've got the swivel and ball socket you've got this uh, inner we'll call it like the armpit joint here that comes in and out and he has a full ball socket fully rotational um, at the upper abdomen and then he also twists at the waist so there's two points of articulation in the midsection alone the head is on a full ball socket and the neck is also a separate piece like in all the Play Arts Kai figures. Now the one thing that I have a big issue with uh, with this figure in particular is that the hood is way too high up on the head. It should end right about here but for some reason it's you know it's sculpted way over the head so it makes Robin look like he has kind of a cone head and that's not really good. I'm not digging that too much. I'm going to try to see if there's a way to remove this and bring down the cloak a little bit. Also another part, another thing that is kind of bad about this is the fact that the hood has this piece that joins from one end to the other. See when you're putting the figure in poses where he's looking to the side, this looks really awkward because this looks almost like it's a separate piece, like it's not part of the cape and it's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, as far as, you know, limitation in the arm area, 
the Robin figure is a lot less limited when it comes to raising the shoulders compared to the Batman figures. So that's really awesome. Um, he has the typical uh, hinge and ball socket at the shoulder. He also has, he doesn't have as much as the other figures that you can see here, the this underarm joint. It doesn't come out as much. He has a very limited range of motion. But either way, that joint is still there, which is great. You got the ratcheting joint that I love so much, pretty much at the elbow. So you've got the ball and the hinge. Then you've got a ratcheting joint at the wrist on the ball and hinge. You've got a ball socket here at the mid torso and you've also got a ball socket at the bottom of the torso underneath the the soft goods crutch so really wide range of movement as far as what the upper portion of the body is concerned okay now of course the crotch area is soft so that allows for the leg to come fully up as in all the other play arts kai figures you've got the no double knee joint this always looks awkward uh, on some figures it looks better than others but on this Robin that does really look out of place it looks like it's an uh, incomplete part of the figure so I mean when you put him in those kind of poses he will look a little awkward it's better to keep him you know instead of using the full double joint bring out that whole joint out like that it just looks like he broke his kneecap or something um, it'll probably be better to just kind of do one of these when you're posing him. Still, this is a bit awkward. I don't know. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, aesthetically and visually, uh, Square Enix comes up with a new kind of system for the knee joint because that does look really weird. And a lot of people have complained about how ugly it looks on a lot of the figures. But um, going back to the articulation, you've got... Uh, Two points of articulation actually on the foot. You have this uh, the tip of the boot here, which is on a swivel, and then you have the actual ankle, which has a ratchet, ball, and hinge joint. So a real nice smooth range of movement. And that's pretty much the articulation with Robin. So as far as the details, the paint apps really good the uh, skin tone on Robin is a little bit uh, plain they didn't do a lot of dry brushing here in the arms it's kinda like it's almost uh, in the molded color plastic as you can see there's no airbrushing or nothing it's just kind of plain there but um, overall the armor is really nice it's got some nice airbrush details some shadowing here in the abdominal area you got the Robin logo Everything is nice and clean. The paint is really nice. There's no uh, misapplications, no no paint smudging that I can see. The utility belt is is detailed very nicely in a metallic gold paint. You can see the uh, arm bracers. You they come in a in a dual color, so you got like an olive green and then you got like a lighter green, which makes nice contrast on the forearms. The pants are very dark olive green with. Uh, with a robin red that matches the the armor seat the the armor shirt on the top the robin figure does come with a couple of interchangeable hands he brings closed fist he brings these hands to hold the staff that he comes with and the staff fits perfectly nice and snug in his hand as you can see here this is a See, you could put them here holding the staff with both hands and it works really well. Setting aside the minor issue with the awkwardly positioned hood on the figure, I think the action figure in general turned out really damn great. The details are amazing, the articulation is top notch, and I think DC collectors and collectors in general will love to add this figure to their toy shelf. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the toy house!